Movie involving sports opens with the sound of the crowd over the opening credits cliche. That didn't take too long. Two and a half minutes of independent wrestling poster opening credits. Randy the Ram Robinson, no doubt the Iron Man of independent wrestling back in the day, according to these papers. Guarantee Mickey Rourke knows something about Iron Man 2. April 6, 1989 was on a Thursday, not a Saturday. <coughs> the Undertaker today, sadly. From personal experience, yeah, wrestlers actually do prepare and sign kindergarten classrooms if performing at certain school gyms. Not the weirdest place we've prepared, but still. There's always that one character who is seen, but his face is out of camera shot. If someone was uncomfortable with having their face on camera, what was the goddamn point of them being in this movie? What I like a lot about this movie is the camera following Randy throughout 80% of the film like it's a literal behind-the-scenes documentary instead of a drama. Barely getting paid any money, not acknowledged as much as the past, living in a trailer, and then getting locked out of your trailer. This has literally all the hints that Randy's life sucks. Randy forgot to remove his wrist tape before exiting the elementary school. Welcome to professional wrestling, everyone. When one gets into it, only thing they want to do is continue living their glory days and never pay attention to their health. Which goes on to damage their lives, both physically and mentally, once they start to get old. Told you wrestling is a dark sport. These asshole kids. Also, how the hell did they know Randy was sleeping in his van? It was the middle of the night when Randy returned home, and from the windshield's point of view, Randy is not visible to the kids. Choke slam. Some of it was for fun, the choke slam was likely for being his alarm clock. What's the matter, did they raise the price of tights? Asshole boss is a dick to wrestling. Randy could easily kick his ass, but of course that would mean job termination and a potential fine. But still. First moment I hear someone making fun of what I like to do, I'd love nothing more than to tombstone his ass to hell. Where the hell is this? Are the wrestlers invading some guy's trailer park? Hi guys, listen up! They put Randy in a private room before giving out the match card. What's so wrong with having Randy hear who his opponent is going to be tonight? Versus the Funky Samoans. Are they, by any chance, the Usos? You mentioned Funky and Samoan, which reminds me of Rikishi. But since it was plural, I'm wondering if this was the foreshadow of the Usos arrival in WWE two years after this film's release. Curious. He's for the strap. We got Tommy Rotten versus Randy the Ram. The promoter mentions that Randy's match with Tommy Rotten will be for the strap, which refers to a championship title. However, following Randy's victory over Tommy, he is not seen holding a title belt or announced as the new champion. So what strap were they going for? Was it imaginary? I think now I see where Seamus got inspired to have a large-ass mohawk in 2015. Then we get up, double drop kick, we powder out again. Oh, this scene brings back so many memories of being an independent wrestler. Looking forward to going back in the future. <laughs> and now Randy's got a concussion before he even had a chance to get into the ring. <laughs> I don't recall that guy earlier declaring this match to be no disqualification, unless there's a deleted scene in which he did announce that. Does this movie have an extended cut or something? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is history in the making. I put the referee gets knocked down at the crucial point in the match cliche into a movie rather than a wrestling event. 350 sin videos and there are still chances at a first time. <laughs> Aside from distracting the crowd so Randy could blade, I don't get what the point of Tommy throwing out the referee was. And did he even know that Randy was going to blade after hitting the exposed turnbuckle? Also, blading. Hated doing that. <laughs> Frequency noises just for a little bit of blood. Maybe just a movie, but it feels like Randy wastes more time posing for the crowd than any WWE superstar I've ever watched. April 6th. You know what? I blame this movie for the ultimate foreshadowing, as April 6th legit becomes the day The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania ends six years later. Two words. Rematch. Rematch is one word, you dumbass. Come on guys, let's all go take a shower together. <laughs> he ain't joking, you know. That's how it works sometimes. Jesus, if I wanted a private lap dance and I got a place where any asshole can walk in and watch, I'd be asking for a damn refund. Where's the privacy in an obvious see-through curtain? Thank god the strip clubs I go to are not like this. How old are you anyway? Well, at least Randy doesn't have to feel alone when it comes to being too old at what he does. Also, someone hasn't kicked that guy's ass for questioning Cassidy's age. With a little luck, this could be my ticket back on top. Oh, what? Sorry, I got distracted. What did he say again? Passion of the Christ. You never seen it? Seriously, what's the big deal of not seeing Passion of the Christ? Hell, even I've never seen that movie. Uh-oh, angry strippers are coming after me now. Gotta go. Uh, maybe some blow? Don't do drugs. Any movie that takes a jab at wrestlers using steroids just to make haters think all their theories were correct always pisses me off. Also, since Randy is intensifying his training simply because he's battling the Ayatollah in a 20th anniversary rematch, he's basically asking for a heart attack and near death. At least he's got a job, right? Dick.
They don't like. Dude, that's still technically store property. Property damage. Do these two come in on a daily basis using anything metal they can find to practice getting hit by weapons prior to an upcoming hardcore match? Staple gun. Staple yeah. gun. Staple guns? Mouse traps? Glass? Thumbtacks? Barbed wire? Put in an AK-47 and a grenade launcher and I'm good to go! For a CZW event, the ring's looking a little light on dangerous weapons. Previously on The Wrestler. Also, why not just show this match in its entirety instead of previewing the end, seeing the aftermath, and then going back into what happened? Randy is a dick to the crowd. Man, the silence, the slow walk-in, the vomiting makes the oncoming heart attack all the more intense to watch. Just goes to show how well done this movie was. That ass is pretty tan for someone who was clearly seen wearing his underwear at the tanning salon earlier. Shouldn't his ass be pasty white or something? Randy's promoter has very poor grammar. You're a warrior is supposed to be, you are a warrior. Robin Ranzinski, come to the pharmacy, your prescription's oh. ready. Stating that Randy had his prescription or any other specific material items waiting for him is a violation of HIPAA. Yeah, yeah, I know, I'm a fucking nerd. It's called research. I'm actually removing another sin because of the music going along with the scene where Randy has to adjust to retired life post-wrestling, especially when he didn't want to. It was absolutely perfect. Hey Adam, wanna play Nintendo? Kinda in the middle of playing football with my friends right now, but sure, I'll abandon that just to hang out with someone four times my age in a trailer park. Call of Duty 4. What? Adam actually believes Randy would know what Call of Duty is. SNS British Special Ops. Randy has never heard of Call of Duty 4, but if Adam really had an idea what that game is, he would know that it's actually the British SAS, not SNS. <laughs> Normally when people hit doors like that, it's because it's locked or inaccessible from the outside. But here, Cassidy slaps the door twice and proceeds to open it, thus making the hitting unnecessary. Stephanie. McMahon? Also, thanks. I was totally wondering what the name of your strange daughter was. Jesus, with all the time Stephanie has changed her number, presumably to avoid her father, I'm really amazed that Randy is able to find out what each new number is every time. Did he, like, hire somebody to stalk her or something? Or was he doing that himself? You're my daughter and I love you. And I abandoned you when you were a child, which should mean absolutely nothing, and should easily be forgiven all just because I had a near-death heart attack. Capiche? Yeah, you get a pretty good crowd today. Might want to lower your expectations. Randy's fame has been waning with every year that passes. No offense. And don't forget, Tuesday night is... Don't get me wrong, the jump cut into something with an awesome song is cool, but there have been too many of them already in this one scene. Also, a movie about a wrestler spends more time in a strip club than anything related to professional wrestling. Did you forget how to knock? Hilarious. Randy's boss makes fun of wrestling and spends most of his time in his office watching pornography. Also, why didn't you just lock the door if you didn't want to be caught watching porn and potentially pleasuring yourself? It's what I did. I mean, would do. Begging for your meat. Wah, wah. You know, because the job's for a deli counter. You look clean. Not all strippers do drugs, idiot. I think Stephanie is a lesbian. You just told Cassidy you had no idea what Stephanie likes, but all of a sudden, just because she rejected you in anger and fury, your mind thinks, oh, I think she likes women. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I'm down. I'd like to see where he got his good looks from. In this day and age, nobody can say that about a kid that isn't their own without at least someone spreading rumors and making false accusations of pedophilia. Social media, folks. I knew that from the start. Last time I danced and sung a song that was playing over the radio like that, I was asked to leave. Over here, not a single person bats an eyelash. What's the name of this town? I'm thinking of moving there. The 90s fucking suck. Forceful kissing. And all just because both agreed that the 90s fucking sucked. Do I really gotta wear one of these things? No, you're special. Sarcasm. While some of the following Randy around scenes are cool, there are some that just seem to drag on way too long. This is a perfect example of the ones that drag way too long. Sound of a non-existent crowd just to remind us that Randy misses wrestling. Something we've already known since the moment he was forced to retire. You're baloney, pal. Jeez, you don't have to whack it on the table like you're gonna kill someone. Baloney lives matter, dude. Uh, Randy, that's the hold button, not the intercom button. Which in your opinion is the best smoked ham? Why does his opinion matter? His taste buds and likes are most likely different than yours. Also, this deli scene is four minutes too long. Last time I saw a movie where scenes dragged out this long, it was The Room. A movie that completely sucked. A big brush coming up. Wah, wah. It's the fourth quarter. Come on, come on, come on. Man, no one seems to want to have fun these days. If I were that customer, I'd run to the other side of the aisle ready to catch it. The S stands for Stephanie. And when I wear it, it stands for shithead. You never did anything wrong. Newsflash, Stephanie already knew that. I used to try to pretend that you didn't exist. Holy shit.
Man, if you want to make things right with your daughter, don't admit that you tried to pretend she didn't exist. Whether it's in the past or not, it won't help your case. Nothing says bond between father and daughter more than trespassing into authorized property. You think that I'm like the stripper? What? Randy thanks you for helping him get the courage to patch things up with his daughter and you think he's treating you like a stripper rather than a regular human being? Why does Cassidy have to be such a bitch in this film? I'm a mom. And Randy's a dad. What's your point? We want a goddamn dance, sweetheart. Fuck you. He pays you, so you gotta give him a dance. That's how this shit works, lady. I'm surprised Cassidy didn't get fired for that. Squeeze your titties together, Fuck shake your fucking ass. Fuck you! I'm removing another sin. This argument of demands was hilarious as fuck. I guess when depressed, you attend a wrestling event, which gives you more depression because you know you can't do it anymore. Also, it takes over 40 minutes of movie time before we even get another glimpse of wrestling in a movie called The Wrestler. Did you like it? Yeah, we put on a hell of a show. Hell of a show? You saw only one match. You saw wrestle. I'm still jumping off the top rope. Lies. Then again, anything to get you laid, I guess. Quite a shame that Randy's relationship with his daughter was destroyed by a simple choice of removing a hearing aid so that he wouldn't hear any potential phone calls or alarms. You are a living, breathing fuck up! She said it, I didn't. A little less. A little more. A little less? A little more? Jeez, the amount of food in that bowl is almost the same as it was before. She must be looking for an excuse for Randy to blow up. Randy the Ram? Except older. Really? It takes a simple fan recognizing Randy and calling him old that convinces him to tear up his finger and rampage the deli? I would have honestly rampaged after being told a little more and a little less over and over again. <laughs> Take that, tricks! I prove you are not just for kids. <laughs> Balls to the Wall is a fucking epic song. Where are you going? I got a match. When is it? Seriously? Randy just said that he was leaving because he had a wrestling match. And the first thing you ask is, when is it? Kind of obvious that it's today. And plus, read the damn flyer he just gave you. Your heart. My heart. <laughs> Randy doesn't even acknowledge the fact that someone actually traveled to see him because she was concerned for his well-being. I know he's been through hell and has nothing left, but he should at least be happy for that. The only place I get hurt is out there. The world don't give a shit about me. Well, damn. Talk about honesty. I respect that. The only one you're gonna tell me when I'm through is you people here. And that's why I'm coming back too, folks. Pure inspiration right there. Attacking from behind. What are you doing? And another verse. Can't believe I just placed a copyright infringement sin in a movie. The Ayatollah clearly didn't get hit by Randy at all, but decided to fall down just for the joy of falling down. The referee, on the other hand, got demolished. Come on, Ralph, pin me! Aside from wanting to hit his signature Ram Jam, I'm pretty sure the other reason Randy didn't pin Ayatollah was because it wouldn't look like a believable finish. Man, that ending was absolutely wonderful. Randy knew he was going to die, but proceeded to leap off the top rope one last time for one last epic moment in life. Dying in the ring isn't exactly a good thing, but when we're looking at this from his view, it was the right way to go. Dying doing what he loved. I'm about to cry now. Literally 30 seconds of blank screen before the actual end credits roll.